you powerful. Now, I know that you've heard me say many times, or you've read or, or on the, listened on the tapes, that loving yourself is the most powerful thing we can do. Then everything flows. Everything flows beautifully. And I'm not talking about vanity or arrogance, because that is not love. That's always fear. I'm talking about just really respecting and appreciating this incredible, magnificent being that we are. You know, little babies know how to love themselves. You were born in pure love, all of you. There's not one little baby alive I, that I know of that ever criticizes its body or ever says, my hips are too big. Have you ever heard a baby say that? <laughs> They're just thrilled and delighted that they have a body. And they rejoice in it. And they love themselves. They love their toes. They love everything about themselves. They absolutely adore. They f express their feelings. You know, when a baby is happy, you know it. When a baby is angry, the whole neighborhood knows it. They're never scared to let people know how they feel. They live in the moment. And they're filled with courage. And they're wonderful. And we were all like that. You've got to remember that you were filled with courage and you were full of love and you adored yourself when you were very little. And then what happens is we start to grow up and we start to listen to people that were frightened or critical or resentful or guilty. And many of us grew up with people like that. You know, if you grew up in a family where there was criticism was the norm, and you're going to grow up to be a critical person. You're going to look at everything in life as with criticism. And you probably criticize yourself and other people. And you won't enjoy life nearly as much as you could. If you grow up in a family where you were not allowed to express anger, then either you're a person who is terrified of anger, or you swallow it down all the time and you let it sit in your body. If you were raised in a family where everybody was manipulated by guilt, then you're probably going to do the same thing. You're probably a person who runs around saying, I'm sorry all the time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And you can never ask for anything outright because you always want to manipulate somebody. But these are old family patterns. And it's very easy to blame our parents and it's very easy to blame our childhood or our environment. But the problem with that is that it keeps us stuck. We don't get to be free. We get to stay in our victim thing. And that's no good for anybody. Then we just get to keep having our problems. But remember, you're in charge now. Doesn't matter what your parents said. Doesn't matter what anybody else did. Doesn't matter what you learned. What really matters is what you are choosing to think and say now. Because you're the only person that thinks in your mind. And you choose your thoughts. Now, I can tell you lots and lots of wonderful things. But if you don't choose to listen to them, then they're not going to work at all. So you are always in charge, and you're creating your world and your life. Now, I've known that one of the most powerful affirmations you can use is, I love and approve of myself. I love and approve of myself. And when you first say that, it's amazing what can come up and come to the surface. Lots of times when we begin to say that, all the negative messages come to the surface. And it's marvelous because that gives us an opportunity to know what's been in the way. You see, if you don't hear your negative messages, you don't know what's in your way. So when you start to do an affirmation like, I love and approve of myself, you want to really pay attention to what the negative messages are. Because they're the ones that are in the way. And when you find a negative message, if you could write it down, it's wonderful because you want to think, I found a treasure. This is something that's really in my way and really creating a problem. Remember, we get to choose the way we think and we can choose to change the way we think. It's always our choice. Now, what I'd like you to do right now is take out those little mirrors that you have. I know everybody has a little mirror. Okay, good. 
Now let's see if you can look in your eyes without primping. <laughs> see if you can manage to do that. <laughs> I want you to look in your eyes and I want you to say, I love you. I love and approve of you exactly as you are. Okay, now just begin to notice what you're feeling. Don't judge it, just notice. What are the feelings that are coming up? Are they feelings of joy? Do you feel you feel wonderful about yourself? Are they feelings of criticism or negativity? Don't judge them, just notice what's coming up. Acknowledge the negative message. Just acknowledge it, and you can always say, thank you for sharing. <laughs> and realize that the, th the negative messages that are coming up now are very much the things that are in the way of you loving yourself. Okay, what I want to do right now is let's do a, just a little bit of sharing. Okay, I want to know what sort of messages are coming up from you. Hmm? Yes. Fear. Who would be upset if you really loved yourself? Me. No, 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 no. It always goes back farther. Okay. Who would be upset if you really loved yourself? My parents. Your parents. Which one? Both of them? Yeah. Okay. Family. Mostly, well, mostly what, my what was the family family. message? Um, always judgmental, always, um... Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so you came from a off. critical, judgmental, resentful family. Right. Okay, fine. So you're and a wonderful... Fearful. And fearful. Oh, boy, you really got it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it just means that you have a little more to work on. You know, I really think that some of us are very young souls, and we come here, and it's like going to kindergarten. Life is really very simple. And some of us are much older souls, and we pick tougher tests, and it's more like going to graduate school. But, you know, you can do it. It's just that you've chosen perhaps a little more difficult things to overcome. But see, it's my belief that the main thing that we really come here to work on is loving ourselves in spite of what they say and in spite of what they do. And that's what we really need to do. So, okay, you've got things, you've got credit, you've got judgment, you've got criticism, you've got fear, probably a little guilt in there too. <laughs> okay, then you... you I, I like to always think of that we can go beyond our parents' limitations. You know, they had a limited way of looking at life. And you were a very good little child, so you learned what they taught you. See, a lot of us think that we're bad and we're not good enough and we're no good. But actually, we're ideal, wonderful, loving little children. And we learn exactly what our parents teach us. Not always what they tell us to do, but we learn from them. And we learn exactly what they do, and we grow up doing the same thing. You know, the, the, so many people ask me about how to love yourself. How do you love yourself, Louise? Because I talk about it all the time. So I made a list of how to love yourself. And it's even in poster and postcard form now. But number one on that list of how to love yourself is to stop all criticism. Just stop it, now and forevermore. And make a vow to yourself that you're going to do your very best from now on to stop criticizing number one you and then other people. It'll be a lot easier to stop criticizing other people when you stop criticizing yourself. Now, number two on that list is stop scaring yourself. And here we go into fear. How often do you terrorize yourself with your own thoughts? You get into absolute terror, and it's only coming from your thoughts. Nobody out there is doing a thing. Sometimes it's an old family pattern. Sometimes we get new things. How many people here are absolutely in terror of earthquakes? And how often do you do that to yourself? You know, we find so many ways to scare ourselves. I would like people, to, when you have time, to make a list of your fears. Make a list of your fears. And then give yourself the opportunity to turn each fear into a positive affirmation. Turn each one into something positive. And remember, always you are in charge. 
You are always in charge. See, one idle thought doesn't make a whole lot of difference. It's like a, but thoughts are like drops of water. You drop a drop of water on the table here, and it doesn't mean much. But if you keep dropping and keep dropping and keep dropping, you get, a, the table becomes a wash, and then you get a puddle on the floor, and then you can get a little pond and a lake, and finally you can create an ocean. And with our own thoughts, we can drown in a sea of negativity, or we can float on the ocean of life. And it's up to us. The thoughts we think accumulate. And what sort of puddles are you standing in? Or are you up to here? Or are you up to here and trying to paddle? Now, what are you doing to yourself? When we're willing to change our thinking, we can change our experiences. And it doesn't matter if you've got a big puddle of negative thoughts. You know, you can move over here and create a puddle of marvelous positive thoughts. You can make changes, always. So you want to turn those fear thoughts into positive affirmations. Let them work for you.